When it comes to investing, sometimes you've got to have faith, as somebody said. I remember having lunch once upon a time with a fund manager of the old school, refined Englishman variety, sort of chap who'd live in a house like this, and he rather took me aback towards the end of the meal when he started talking about this company his fund had put money into. And the reason was, um, he'd previously been so understated and suddenly um, he became wildly enthusiastic about this company and he was speaking with zeal and a great deal of volume about cash flow and profit margins and all the rest of it. And I almost wondered if it was the same person. He's fallen too much in love, I thought. He's never going to know when to sell. He won't be able to sell. And then I thought about it and I said, this is one of the most successful fund managers in the business. And if I compare my investment success to his, well, um, he's clearly a lot better at it than I am. But he's in love with this company to the point of being delusional. And it was then I had sort of one of those light bulb moments about the psychology of being long. long. See, never mind our refund manager, our refined English fund manager, I could just as easily have been describing, you know, Tesla investors, silver bugs, Bitcoin maximalists. When I use that word zeal, you need zeal or belief um, as an investor. Oh, sorry, it's got windy and I haven't got my wind jammer with me. But otherwise, if you don't have zeal, you'll, be one, you'll you end up cynical and you'll be one of those people that forever is declaring that Bitcoin or Tesla or whatever is a bubble. And you end up missing out on you know, some of the greatest investment opportunities of our lifetimes. At the same time, you need to be cynical too. Otherwise, how do you know when to sell? And bearish articles seem to command a lot more nods of agreement, never mind hits, than bullish ones. Bears are hallowed as geniuses when bear markets come around, yet bears have also predicted about 37 of the last three declines. They're wrong much more often then they're not, at least the perma bears are. There's a time to be bearish and a time to be bullish. But, you know, as human beings progress and thus economies grow over time, the bullish stance tends to be the correct one more often than the bearish one. So I guess the key is to be cynical and disbelieving in the face of rubbish investments and deeply credulous <laughs> in when confronted with not so rubbish ones. Easy to say, hard to do. Uh, a song, you've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run, as Kenny Rogers once said. So how do you know? Well, there's no substitute for knowledge, for experience. Uh, that's, you know, how to know when to channel your youthful bravado and when you're wise and cynic. So I think we're instinctively bearish, oh crikey, here's the wind again, because, um, I'll go behind here, I hope it'd be less windy, because um, bearish instinct enables us to evaluate risk and take precautions. You know, there could be a predator in the trees over there. There probably isn't, but there might be, so I should act as though there is, and that way we survive. You know, let's assume the seas will be rough tomorrow and have a lifeboat in place. So how do we overcome our instinctively bearish psychologies in a bull market? If you're not a 100% technical driven guy, you know, which most of us aren't, even if we do stare at charts, how do you stay bullish through a bull market so that you stay invested and keep riding the thing up? Belief is the answer. You need some of our fund manager's belief, but that belief needs to be founded on something. Knowledge. The more you read, you listen to podcasts, you do your research, the more you know. And if you can back up your beliefs or theories with hard facts, truth, data, information, then you can reinforce your beliefs. Your belief is not then superstition, or delusional, it's fact-based evidence. It's evidence-based, to, to use the NAF expression that's now so commonplace on places like LinkedIn. So, 
you know, how am I applying that in today's markets? I was of the mind previously that there was a major shortage in most commodities due largely to a decade of underinvestment and that as a result prices of energy, metals, they were going to go higher. And um, the action in commodities over the last couple of months has shaken that belief. Um, I could also see that the Russian invasion of Ukraine had panicked prices a lot higher than perhaps they should have gone given the circumstances at, at those then current levels of supply and demand. We did seem to need a correction and we got one. But it's the sell-off as a result of the falling demand from, from, from China for metal as a result of its lockdown that surprised me and the grinding action that's followed. So back to reading, researching, thinking. Have the facts around this bull market changed? Perhaps a little, but not nearly as much as the price. Is this ESG net zero transformation still ongoing? There's a growing realisation dawning about how much it's going to cost, but I still think decarbonisation and the electrification of everything is going to be a huge theme for this decade. And it's going to require a huge amount of metal and energy. And so I'm looking at my portfolio of investments. I like what most of the companies are doing. Um, I like how they're going about things. I like the sectors they're in. And I can see increasing demand for their products. So I've got very little I want to sell, not at current prices at least. Um, should I buy more then? <laughs> well, I'm exposed enough as it is, I think, probably. But overall, I'm deeming what we've seen in metals a correction in an ongoing bull market rather than the end of the bull. But the fact that I've just used the word deemed expresses doubt. So maybe I need to consume some more bull food to get those beliefs a bit more entrenched. Like that fund manager, whose company went up 10 times, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my Substack. It's going great guns there. Um, lots of excellent information. And please share this video and, and generally have a nice day and read lots and consume lots and think. And then your belief will be evidence-based. Thanks very much. Cheerio. Goodbye.